And here we go. Hi, guys. How'd you like my new little intro? Whoops, looks like. <laughs> Am I muted? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, it says I'm going. It says I'm going. Hi, happy Friday. <laughs> we are here for Friday Night Scrapbooking, and I am so excited, so excited to be here with you tonight. Today is the first day that felt like fall here in Southern California, and it is actually raining. So thank you all from <laughs> for sending us rain from wherever you are. We have desperately, desperately needed some rain here for a long time. So I'm so excited to see all of you here tonight. And okay, good. Thank you, Sandy. You can hear me. For some reason, it had a little um, warning for me. Yes. Okay, great. So wow, welcome everyone who's here. Oh my gosh, I have to scroll back for just a minute. Ruth was the first one on. Welcome, Ruth. Debbie's here. Mary's here. Um, Mary, I am going to see if I can. There, I, I was going to try. Hey, oh, I just put you on there. Um, I'm, I'm okay. Hmm. How do I do this? I wanted to try to make um, Mary, if you wouldn't mind, a moderator. I might have to give me a second. I might have to go to to actually YouTube to do that. And um you know, we've had those, let me see. No, I can only pin, report, and remove you. So I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't know how to make you guys a moderator. I, I'm going to have to figure that out. But just buzz me, okay? Buzz me if there's shenanigans happening in the chat, okay? Because, you know, last time we had some shenanigans happening and we will not have any shenanigans here on Craft Some Joy. So, all right. So just keep an eye out, okay, guys? You're going to have to buzz me if you <laughs> if you see something. I'm going to have to figure out how to maybe have somebody else help me with that too. Okay, we are going to dig into fall tonight. You guys, I am so excited to share with you what I created because we're going to do some base pages and borders with the Golden Harvest collection. And it is gorgeous. The more I work with it, the more I am in love with it. So welcome, Mary, Annette, <coughs> excuse me, Pam, Lana, Sandy, Kelly, Chrissy, Bunny from Florida, Monica, if you are a first timer here, let me know. Put in new, new in the captions um, and just let me know. And a big, big welcome here to Friday Night Scrapbooking if you are new. And I'm so happy to have you. Okay, so Linda's here, Cindy, Wendy, Kim, Robin, Sue, Julie from Oz, Janice, Pam's here, Carrie's here. Okay, that's a new name. I don't know. Susan's here. So, Deborah, Annette, and just welcome, welcome, Gwen, everyone. <laughs> no, it's kind of like Romper Room. I see who's here, who's here. <laughs> okay, you guys remember Romper Room? <laughs> All right, Laura's here. All right, uh, and upstate New York, yes. Terry, Susan, I love seeing all your names, you guys. Mona's here. Thank you for saying hello. Thank you for sharing where you're from because that makes our little community feel so much more intimate when we can go, hey, I know where you guys are from. That's fun. So I want to just start off. Okay, I think Ruth said, I'm ready to see. Tell me what's new. Show me it. Show the new stuff, right? So let me um, let me share what's new. Are you guys ready? I'm going to see. You guys, let me know if I can actually talk.
two tools, the spiderweb punch and the bats and stars border maker cartridge. Woohoo! <laughs> cute, right? I love that border right there. That's that's pretty cute. Um, then we are going to uh, add in some new shades of cardstock, purple ice, gorgeous, and pumpkin. So some new those new colors are going to start rolling in super duper. Okay, I think you should be able to hear me now. I turned the music really low. Should I just turn it off? There we go. Also, let me pause it here if I can reach my pause button. Oops. Here. Eight by eight. You guys have been waiting. There you go. Thanks, Jean. Uh, you've been waiting for eight by eight. And they're back. Woohoo! Look at those. And there's two new ones coming. So not only do we have like our standard colors, but these two gorgeous new ones for fall. And a new happy album. So if you were wondering whether you were going to do that school album in um, the big size or in a smaller size, woo, what about that? I'm going to back up just for a second here. Okay. I still have a stash of these from old company. Side loading. Wait, did you catch that? <laughs> Side loading eight by eight. Okay, eight by eight pages, side loading. We have been wanting these for so long and they're back. That's exciting. So also don't forget to check out Last Chance. They put some new things on Last Chance. I'm gonna just zoom back out again. <laughs> they put some new things on Last Chance. Some of the totally tonals that just came in for third quarter, now they're all moved to last chance. So if you really like those, you better get over there and grab some. I know free shipping is over, which is kind of a bummer. That was exciting having the chance to get things without paying for shipping. But there's Halloween coming. And so um, let's just keep on moving. Let's use all those supplies that you just got and jump in and have some fun. So you guys want to see what I've been working on? Well, let me do this. Let me do this. If you are new here, we're going to, just as I mentioned, we're going to do base pages and borders with Golden Harvest. And to find me, these are my links and where you can find me all over the place, right? So my Creative Memories link is there. Facebook. Facebook is a good place to kind of stay in the know about uh, what's happening. I usually post event cards on Facebook. I do um, new product on Facebook. I'll go live on Facebook. So if you have a Facebook account, come pop on over, craft some joy with Lauren Hines and follow so that you can just kind of keep up with what's going on. That's a great place to find me. I know it's kind of hard. It's cutting my head off, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, got to adjust that a little bit. Um, so Instagram right here, craft dot, there's a little dot, some dot joy. It has been my goal to try to get more content up on Instagram because it's such a fun little platform and I can do like really quirky little things <laughs> over there. So um, you just, you can find me there at craft some joy, craft dot some dot joy. Okay. And um, yeah, oh yeah, I did not know Rolling Tote was part of the deal for free shipping. I didn't know that either, Jean. Hmm. Okay, so I wanted to share one other thing before we jump in tonight, because um, this has come up a few times. I, I feel like that's just quite cutting my head off. Okay, this has come up a few times. I've had several customers who have contacted me over the last few weeks who've said, Lauren, I don't know what I did, but I'm not associated with you anymore as my advisor. And that's just kind of, I, I just kind of feel like I have to do my public service announcement <laughs> to let you know. So when you shop with Creative Memories, basically when you click on a link, you're going to get associated with whosoever link you click on. So what's most important, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a screen share, make sure, hold on. I got to make sure I'm in the right screen because I clicked off of it. Okay, 
now I'm in the right screen. <laughs> when, um, when you are ready to order with Creative Memories, um, so you're going to want to sign into your account. Okay, so go ahead, sign into your account. And then um, I, I actually had some a, a conversation with uh, creative Memories customer service about this. So basically what they're saying, you know, this is cookie based. So if you find you are not associated, not only just with me, but maybe it's yourself or maybe it's with the advisor that you want to shop with. If you're not, if their picture is not showing up here, customer service told me the best thing to do is actually to create a bookmark for your advisor's page. That way, whenever you're ready to place an order, you just go to their bookmark and you're always connected with the advisor. And you can click around on links till your heart's content and you're still going to be associated with the advisor that um, you would like to shop with. And there are, you know, it'll say you are shopping with, you know, so-and-so. Uh, do you want to continue? And there's little, um, you know, things built into the process, but the main thing would be to, sh to sign in, make sure your advisor is here in this little picture over here. And then I use Chrome and I, um, I didn't have a chance to pull up a, a Safari screen. Chrome, all you have to do is come up to the bar right here and see this star. There's a little star right here. You just star that. And it'll say bookmark added. And I've actually created folders on Chrome. That's why I use Chrome because I love having folders. And so I would have um, like maybe I'd put that under shopping, my shopping folder and my bookmark would then go right in there. And every time I wanted to shop with my advisor, I would just go into, say, you know, here, my shopping tab click on it and you can see, well, these are my shopping links. Yeah. N no judgment. Okay. No judgment. <laughs> but I do have my own, I have a creative memories folder over here. So this is actually where my site is loaded right here. Uh, creative memories, scrapbooking supplies. So bookmark whatever browser you're using. So if you're using Safari, if you're using Chrome, if you're using, um, I, I don't know, what is Microsoft, is it Edge or whatever that they are right now, bookmark it and that's your best way via told to me by Creative Memories customer service. Thank you very much. Okay, um, because it's always important to us if we're, you know, we wanna take care of you. And if you somehow get associated with someone else, then that's hard for us to do. So that's it, my friends. Okay, um, let's get back to business. And <laughs> oh, so Lana says, it happened to you at one point. And since that, I always check that advisor name. You're so sweet. And Lana, I appreciate you doing that very much. But it does happen because it's all like whoever whoever's link you click on, it just will go there um, depending on you know, if you're watching somebody or participating, I know there's so many great things to participate in virtually now, right? There's challenges and there's classes and all that different stuff and emails that are getting shot at you. So if you, um, if you want to just make sure bookmark, that's the key. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. All right, you guys. So are you ready? We are going to go to my overhead camera and we're going to grab this gorgeous, gorgeous new Golden Harvest collection. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to see what I have for you? I'm going to turn on my lights. Okay. Um, and let me get in here really quick and find my lights button <laughs> so you can see brighter wow like if i had those on me front facing oh man it's like a plane landing in here okay so we're good there we've got the lights on now let's get let's dig into this gorgeous golden harvest collection so i had i was getting ready to do my live with you folks and um I was 
trying to think, well, I, I want to do something fun. I want to do a, you know, kind of, I was thinking base pages and borders. And I thought, oh gosh, but then there's the virtual crop that's happening. So I'm kind of covering those up so you can't see it. And then I actually, I got my eye caught, my eye got caught with a sketch and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. And then I looked for how to do it and I couldn't find it. So I looked a little bit more if anybody had posted how to do it and I couldn't find it. And, um, and then I thought, well, I'm just going to dissect it and try to figure out how to make this sketch. Because if you see the actual layout that was done with this, it was very pretty. But you know, I can't ever, <laughs> I can't ever leave anything as it is, right? I mean, that's just, I have to Laurenify it. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to share what we're going to do tonight. And we are going to make a base, we're going to make base pages and borders with this beautiful Golden Harvest collection. And I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to make this. Love it! What do you guys think? Do you love it? So here I decided to turn the sketch into a border. Okay, so you can see how I kind of took the components of that design with the angles and the colors and the cluster in the center here, and then using a border maker cartridge and turned it into a border because I love my borders. I'm the border queen, you know. So it's a three inch border. So I thought, okay, if it's a three inch border, we're going to continue that process and we're going to make a base page and we're going to make this all fit and work together. So do you guys want to learn how to do it? You ready? Okay. So yeah, sometimes the sketches are just hard to kind of figure out because there's no dimensions, there's no instructions. And so I tell you, it actually did take me a few tries to get this right. <laughs> and um, what I thought I would do, so I'm gonna share um, this layout. Okay, I, I thought what I do is I'll, I'll share this layout so you can see how this is comes together but I'm actually going to cut yet another design and we're gonna see how this translates in with the fall leaves border punch. And, um, but still use the same collection, but I'm gonna kind of choose some different colors and different, um, uh, a different uh, punch feature, okay? But you'll be able to do, you could do this layout or you can do the one I'm working on. So I'll kind of walk you through both simultaneously. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. And um, I did not stick this down yet because <clears throat> I wanted to share that this was a border. So now I'm just gonna lay that one into place so it doesn't get lost in the process. So it is ready to go. And I'm excited. I know just what pictures. I grabbed some pictures to go on this layout with my little photo folder. And if you haven't learned about photo folders, you've got to visit my website at craftsomejoy.com and learn how to download and print your little photo folders so that you are completely organized with your photos. Okay, so we are going to start by building the border first, okay? And then we're going to do the base page. So um, the first, the, the pages that I'm going to actually work with you tonight on are these pages, this stripe. Oh, it's really hard to see the stripe. My lights are so bright. The stripe, it's kind of got a maroon stripe. I need, you need two sheets. So whatever your base is going to be here, you need two sheets of those. Okay. This big base right here. Then you're going to need kind of a, a neutral-ish back for your border. And then you're going to need two colors that kind of pop. And then you're going to need um, something interesting to punch with either a border maker cartridge or a border punch. Punch. So 
for this layout, I thought, okay, so you're going to get the same benefit of going through the whole process. So I'm just grabbing two sheets of white cardstock to build on. Um, and then we are going to, like I said, we're first going to do the border. So did I think about, I did not think about, oh, I wait, what was I going to do for the base? I forgot about the base for this one. <laughs> okay. Well, let me tell you here, this base Okay, I'll walk you through it because I told you I would. This base is done with the wood paper. Okay, so you need the first strip you're going to cut is a three inch strip. So if you want to build this base, it's with the wood paper. And I think what I'm going to do for this layout is I'm going to choose. I forgot to get a base for this. Let me let me find a good base. Am I going to want? Mm -hmm. I think I might go either. So it's it's always fun to kind of pop and play with colors. Da, do I want that's a little white? That's a little much. Um, okay, I could do the the brown again. Or okay, what I was going to pinch the leaves in this. I was going to, oh, maybe I was going to, you know what I think I'll do is I'll use this brown as my base. That's what I'm going to do. And we'll work off of that. Okay, so grab your 12-inch trimmer. And the first thing we're going to do is cut a 3-inch base for the border strip. So for this one, I'm going to use this brown, dark brown paper. And this is the one with the leaves on it and the orange kind of splotches on the back. Okay, so let's cut that at three inches. Why is this? Oh, Got to make sure I'm straight. Okay, three inches. So this is our base for the border. I usually don't do this big of a, this wide of a border, but you can see when you lay it out, that big wide three strip, as long as I feel like as long as you only have it on one side, it gives you a lot of flexibility for the rest of your layout for a two page spread, right? Okay, so this is our first color. So over here, we did the wood. So if you wanna follow this one, we're gonna do the brown. The next thing we're gonna do is cut um, the top triangle. And what we are gonna do is, let me see, so this was, red, the red is one and a half inches. We're going to cut this strip at one and a half inches. Don't you love it when, you know, somebody just says cut at one and a half inches. <laughs> you don't have to figure out how to make this kind of crazy angled border. Cut at one and a half and I just cut at one. <laughs> don't follow me. Follow what I'm saying. One and a half inches. There we go, Lauren. I'll use that strip for something else. <laughs> okay, we're going to cut at one and a half inches. Now we've got it. And we're we'll set the rest of that aside. Actually, I might use the back of it. We'll see. And then I'm going to turn this horizontally and I'm going to cut this at five and a half inches. Okay. And this, we're going to use the um, five and a half inch piece. Okay, and so what we're going to do is cut this into two tri um, triangles. So if you wanted to make two borders, you actually could because you're going to have an extra triangle with this. Or you could use it for a journal card or something else, right? So I'm lining up this corner on my cutting line here and the opposite corner on my cutting line over here. Okay, and you really kind of need to make sure because this is a very small piece of paper, what I like to do, here's your tip. I like to start my blade actually in the center, okay? So do you see how I've just moved it? I don't pull down from the top. I'm gonna push down, start in the center and go up, and now I'm gonna go down. And that, I mean, you can see how perfectly that cut from corner to corner. It doesn't move or anything. Sometimes if you, pull down from the top, your paper might move ever so slightly. Okay, so we've got one 
a gorgeous yellow strip. And I don't know, maybe I'm going to use the blue. No, I don't know. I don't know if that pops enough. Um, but, okay, I need one more color. I do need to pick out one more color. I thought I had this all in my head, but I don't. I, I think I need this orange. Oh, that's, that's beautiful with all of this. Yeah, I like all these. So the question is, okay, I'm going to do, I'm actually going to punch my leaves in the orange. And I'm going to make my other triangle with the red. Okay, so for the second triangle, this one over here, Okay, you're going to cut a two inch strip. Okay, so we're going to take this paper. So not one and a half, we're actually going to cut two inches. And you can set the rest of that aside. And then we're going to spin it and we're still going to cut it at five and a half inches again. So right there, five and a half inches. And I think on this one, did I use the taller one? I used the, I used the taller one. So the six and a half, the longer piece is what we're going to do the same thing with and cut this border from, from corner to corner. Okay, so one more time, we're gonna go top corner to bottom corner. So once again, this is the six and a half inch rectangle and we're going to cut corner to corner, okay. Nobody's beeped me yet. Are you guys following along? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's so hard to pick which one, Lana, seriously, because it, there's so many and they all, you know, so pretty. Okay, so same again. I'm going to go from the center up and down to cut that triangle. Okay, so for this one, I need, uh, oh, did I do that wrong? a minute. I need it. I need it to be th this. What happened? Oh, Lauren, what did you do? I, I guess I'm thinking it should have been like that. Mm -mm. Whoops. So what did I do? So if it was like this, did I cut it the wrong way? Oh, did I, I should have probably flipped it over. Okay, good point. You know, I didn't catch this the first time, but you actually have to pay attention which corner. The yellow, not so much because, um, well, we got that right on the first time. Let's see. Hold on a second. If I do the red here, I need the cut going this way. Oh, see, I, I should have gone this way. Bam. Okay, so good good to know. Glad I made that mistake. Maybe, I hope you're, you'll catch that before you follow along. I'm just going to do another quick one. So you'll, you'll catch what, I'm, what I mean right now. So I'm going to cut two inches, five and a half. I go this way. Five and a half. No, this way. <laughs> five and a half. And so what I need to do is make sure my angle is going like the border, right? So I'm going to cut from this corner up to the top, right? So on this one, I went from the right corner down to the bottom left. But on this one, we're going to do the opposite. I'm going to go from the bottom right to the top left. Yes. And Carla just said that in the chat. <laughs> That's what I needed to do. Okay, so there we go. Now we're now we're rocking and rolling. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Get that in the right place. And now I have the top and the bottom. So I've got the brown base, yellow, red, and we're gonna have this gorgeous orange as an accent. Okay, so let me set my trimmer aside for a minute. And we're going to get the punch out. So while we're punching, we're going to actually punch two strips, okay? So that we have one ready for the opposite 
page when we're ready to do the um, well, uh, border on the other side. So this looks like um, it does have a direction. So I think I'm going to come down from the top to the bottom because of all the little pumpkins rather than go across. Not that I'm going to use that side, but I think just for fun, I'm just going to do it this way. Um, okay, so we're going to punch the fall leaves. <laughs> all right, you guys keep me in line. Yep, that's the way it goes. Lauren, you did it wrong the other way. But that's why we learn together and have fun. So I think this punch is kind of becoming one of my favorites, the fall leaves. Gorgeous, gorgeous punch. And we're just going to kind of see if this is going to work with the same formula. But I'm also going to mention what you need to do in order to um, create the keyhole um, border too, because it's a little different. Move that one more over. Okay, I'm really kind of curious to see if this is going to work. Let's see. Why don't, before I punch the next one, let's just make sure this is going to, I think it's going to, going to work. Okay, so I, my, my thought was to let those leaves kind of peek out from the, the straight edge. So the formula is kind of take your border and tuck it underneath these pieces and let it peek out. So I, I think it'll work. I mean, yeah, yep. Yeah. I think it'll work. This is kind of still one of my favorites. I don't know, maybe I'm just not loving that orange. What do you guys think? Should I switch it up? I really love this. <laughs> really love this pattern. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. Well, we'll just see how this plays out. Okay. Um, so if you were going to use the keyhole border maker system, border maker cartridge, you're, go you're going to, again, punch two strips. So you need this strip here, and then you need this strip for the other opposite side. Okay. Um, or maybe I'd like it better. Well, we'll just, we'll play. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Okay. So the, I'll, let me just follow through with the orange leaves. So this has a little, little smidge that I missed here. So I'm just going to kind of cut that off. But the next part is, and I'll come back and punch the other one later. Um, we need to cut this apart at five and a half inches. Okay, so I think actually what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my scissors right in between these two leaves is about, I mean, it's not perfect, right? It's about five and a half inches. So instead of having kind of that weird cut, I'm just gonna snip these apart right here. Bing, like that. So what you need to do is basically you're going to have one piece at an angle and one piece that goes straight. So you needed to cut that apart. If you are using the pyramid keyhole, you'll find right in between at about five and a half inches, there's that little um, piece right in between the two loops. And that's where I cut it apart right there. Okay, so let's kind of build this and see where it goes. So we have our base and we have our punch strip and we have our two triangles. So the first thing we need to do is um, angle our punched strip so that it kind of goes from the top here to the corner. And this one is a little trickier, yes, because the punched angle. This punched strip is bigger than my keyhole. Oh, and I'll say if you are doing the, the pyramid, trim this to one inch. Okay, so if you're using this, just trim the, the keyhole to one inch. And, um, and then, so same for this one. This is trimmed to one inch. Use the top of the loop. Okay, so let's get back to work here. This one is going to come here. We're just going to kind of place these on so you can see how this is going to go. 
So this one, again, like I said, goes straight. This one goes at an angle. So kind of by placing these in here and moving them around just a bit, you can kind of get a feel for where these need to be. And it's, it's a little bit of a puzzle game. <laughs> now, what I don't want you to worry about is this intersection right here, because yes, they're not going to touch or anything, but that's where we do, Mary, Mary, what do we do? We do our clusters. <laughs> we do our clusters right here in the center. So it, what it looks like underneath doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're just kind of placing these in. So we've got this one on this corner and bring this back in and the yellow one up top. I'm thinking maybe it's the yellow that I'm not liking. Oh, see, I like the blue better. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I have the other blue piece. I mean, I like the yellow, but I feel like I need a stronger color. I don't know. What do you guys think? <sighs> Now, and so I have the wrong side for the, where'd my yellow go? Oh, here, we can, I feel like I need that blue, the, the strong, see, I think it's just the, the, I, I'm weird like that. It's the um, value, the color value that is kind of bothering me with that. So on this one, I need to go from the top right. I'm just gonna use the other piece. It's gonna be a little long, but we'll make it work right? I need the top right. Yes, the top right to the bottom left corner. Okay, just bear with me guys because see I'm, I went, I didn't go from the center out and I moved it. Ah! Okay, I'm trying to rush. Let's just slow down. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think I like the blue. What do you guys think? I like the blue because it has a little more richness in it. I don't know. Clusters, yeah! Try the leaves on top. Yeah, you could do that, Nancy. Try the leaves on top. Um, that would work too. So the original um, uh, design, the original sketch had the, the border maker cartridge, the border maker punch tucked under, but do it the way that works best for you. So yeah, we could do it on the top. We could see. So what I want to mention though, is that this top corner, you're going to have kind of bleed off the top. So I kind of matched uh, the top of this piece with the top corner here. Okay. So I'm just going to put this down so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to get some adhesive on these leaves so we can kind of work these together. So I'm just going to do kind of that same tuck out, but I don't know. Maybe I want it this way. Maybe I want those fall leaves to be coming this way. We'll see. I don't know. This is what, what you get when you're making, making things happen. Hair live. <laughs> okay. And... We're going to angle from one kind of up to the other opposite corner, but you're going to save it, save enough. So you're going to have to fuss with this. And, and I fussed with my other one too. Believe me, I, I love repositional adhesive for this purpose. So we're going to get this blue, like I said, right here at the top corner. And we're just going to trim that top part off. But now you can see we need to get that leaf border at an angle but kind of tucked I'm going to do the tuck under but Nancy let me know if you do it over that'd be fun to see post it in my customer group <laughs> you'll do something fun I know okay um so I'm going to do the tuck under this way just like that and it looks like I may have to trim that or it might get covered up by the cluster we'll see Okay, so there we go. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll show you a little closer. Can you see? So there's this little piece, and then if I flip it over, that I need to trim off. Not a big deal, but you're just, you're still, the whole idea is getting that diagonal um, edge, which is the whole kind of base of the design. 
So I have that. And now this, this part is much easier. This one is harder because it's at an angle. This one, we just go straight down so easy. So you just go right along the edge and place this um, punched border on the edge here. And then we're gonna place the other angled border right over so that it kind of gives that same tuck under feature. Okay, so let me get some adhesive on here. And then the fun part, the clustering. So <laughs> we'll have this whole border made right here. Got this. And like I said, don't worry about this intersection because that's gonna get all covered up. So the border that I created earlier Actually, I love the pieces. So this is to me the funnest part because this collection, the embellish, the laser embellishments are stunning, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, these are stunning. So in this collection, there was already a circle. So it just covered this intersection so well with that wood um, piece right here. And then I just did some flowers and this is a sticker up on foam squares. So for this, we could do somewhat the same thing. We could just grab in and grab one of the circles that are already in our embellishments and just do that. I mean, even that, that's just a beautiful, simple border. I mean, if you didn't want to do leaves, that's really pretty. Um, or you could do another wood. Or what I thought we could try for this one would be just to cut a little circle. So I'm going to have to make another decision, though. I'm going to go down to a green blade on the inside track. But I need to figure out. <laughs> Maybe this is where we're going to bring in that yellow. How about that? We can bring in that little pop of yellow. Yeah, that looks good. Let's bring in that little pop of yellow with the base for the circle. So this is going to be on the smaller side of circles. And Angelica was here, and she was helping me cut some circles. And she goes, Lauren, you should write the date on the inside. And I thought, I think I did that. I think I talked about that. But let me remind you again, it's always good. Like she's, she was saying, you know, this doesn't feel quite so sharp. And I'm like, oh, well, I put a new one. I got a new one on December of 21. So this is over six months old. And I do a lot of scrapbooking. So um, if you want to kind of keep in in... My red is probably the most used, right? Then the green, then the blue. Um, but you could just flip this over and take a little Sharpie marker and write when you put a new blade in your stash. And there you have it. So isn't that cute? That's cute with the little um, yellow circle. And now we can build on top of this. One of my favorite embellishments I haven't had a chance to use yet. I love these acorns. And look at how pretty that looks together. So maybe what I'll do is use some acorns here. And then I feel like we need kind of a, a darker color. Let me dig in over here. And maybe this deep green leaf. Mm -hmm. I think maybe I'm going to go red. The green is kind of getting lost on there. Let's see if that'll work. Ooh, that, that is pretty. That is pretty. Okay, so uh, I, I mean, I just can't get enough of these lasers. You guys, I'm serious. They are so beautiful, so beautiful. So on this one, we're going to see that yellow background. I, I, I don't know, do you guys get what I mean? The color value, like the yellow up here was just too bright. I needed that richness, but then the pop of yellow here in the center, to me, works. You guys, yeah, it's just a thing. 
<laughs> hey, I think, why not? Talk through the process. Um, sometimes people say, yeah, I just want to know what's going on in your head when you're doing stuff, Lauren. So that's what I try to do. Talk through the process. So I'm going to get some adhesive on these little guys. And this one, of course, since this is kind of my feature piece, is going to go up on some foam squares. And you guys knew I couldn't do all the way out without foam squares. So I'm just going to get on in here and add these in. Okay. So add and yeah, I'm going to add a lot of foam squares because this is just such a beautiful piece. I'm just going to make sure it has that support because it has this kind of intricate piece right here. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to leave this one on because I haven't cut my paper yet. And then we're going to do the base page. You guys, it is so fun. It is so fun. So easy. I have such an easy peasy formula for you tonight for the base page and I'm struggling to get these little guys off tonight. Okay, here we go. Kathy says she likes it. Yep. Never put adhesive on till last. Oh yeah, I know. Okay, here we go. Um, there, just right there. Look at that. Oh, I, I wish, I, I mean, how many of you guys have this set in person? Can you see the foiling on there and the richness of the color? So, you know what, guys, the leaves work, right? The leaves work. You could do leaves or you could do the keyhole punch, right? They're both fun. But I just kind of was thinking, why do I want to completely redo the same one that I've already done? Because you guys are smart enough, you know how to redo the page that I showed. So what we're going to do now, we've got a three inch beautiful border as kind of our um, foundation piece over here on the left side. So we're going to need to grab the trimmer again and it's right here. We're going to cut down. So this is where you're going to need those two pieces of kind of a neutral-ish base. I think it works the best. And we're going to cut the first one. We're going to cut that same three inch piece off. Okay. So right there at three inches, just going to cut that three inch piece off. And this one you can set aside. And now I'm going to take this piece and rotate. And I am going to cut an inch off the top. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I'm actually going to turn my paper and I'm going to cut an inch off the other side. And maybe it's because it'll help when we do the <laughs> lining up on the top. This is kind of a watercolorish paper. And so we need, so basically what we're doing is we are creating this base page. We've got this nice, beautiful striped center, and then we have orange on the top. Let's turn it over and see what this one came. And oh, look at that, red on the bottom. Because again, the, the back of this paper is that tonal kind of paper, right? So if I had just cut another strip here, it would, it would be good too, but it'll it'll look different. Okay, so that's one base page. Now on this side, what you guys know is I love my four and a half inch borders, right? Why? Because then you can put a four by six in that big, beautiful border. So here I have a mat, a four by six mat. You can also do a four by six photo and put another four by four down here. I mean, lots of lots of possibilities but when I think of the dimensions that I like to create with you know it all goes back to what our photos come in right so we're gonna do that same thing and we're gonna cut this paper and again I've got my stripes make sure your stripes are all going the same direction 
So I'm going to cut that four and a half inches off of this base. Okay, four and a half inches. So we're going to set that aside. And now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut the strip off the top and a strip off the bottom, one inch on each side. Okay, so move this over one inch here. And then flip it around. Isn't this an easy base page? Super easy. And one inch here. Oh, still raining a little bit. So pretty outside right now. Okay. Um, all right, so we're gonna do this here, this here. All right. And now, now see, now I've got my orange kind of continuing over here, and then I've got my red continuing over here. Okay, so the last part then is we need the, the base strip for this side. And when you're trying to figure it out, so I'm just going to talk you through it because this is how you learn. When I was looking at what color do I want to pull across, I looked first to my border because this had, you know, we're going to create balance on both sides. So... I could have pulled blue, this greenish color, and I could have done a big strip on that. I could have used the blue, but then I thought, oh, I already have blue, the blue denim here. So the blue denim is actually on the back of this burlap. So it's the same technique that we just did with the stripe and the red. It's just that this is, has the blue burlap on, uh, blue denim on the back, which works perfectly for this layout. So when I was looking at this, I thought, nope, what I want to do, I want to pull this red over to the other side. Okay, so I've got this red here. Now I'm going to pull that red over here. So I'm going to do that same technique with this new layout. And I've got a choice. I can either do this dark blue over here and pull it over here, or I can do the red. And I'm thinking the same thing. Like I've already got a lot of red here. Um, <clears throat> that I'm gonna bring, I don't see a whole lot of blue, so I'm gonna bring that blue over and really kind of anchor this side with this color. So let's dig in and find that blue paper, which is actually on the back of the yellow, and we're gonna cut the four and a half inch strip from here. Okay, so four and a half inches. <clears throat> Does that make sense? I hope that I hope that makes sense. I mean, you can always tune me out and go, yeah, 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 <laughs> whatever, Lauren. But do you see, I, I feel like that is really nicely balanced to kind of just bring that little touch of blue over here in a bigger way. And now the last piece we're going to need is that um, fall leaf border, fall leaves, border strip, border punch <laughs> to kind of... Uh, tie off this seam right here. Sometimes I think it's okay to leave your seams when you're piecing these border pages together, but sometimes I think it's also fun just to find a punch or something that helps kind of, you know, tie it together. Kind of like your adhesive, <laughs> your glue. So let's go ahead and punch this orange again with the leaves. We can see how this punch works. So, yeah. So, let's see. What are you saying? The blue gets lost on the brown. Yep, it kind of does over there. It kind of does. Especially, it, not so much in person, but, um, yeah. So, you might switch it up and try something different. But on, my, on the camera, it definitely, I can see it just kind of all blobs together over there. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. Let's try this. And keep going. And the last punch here. Okay, so these are the leaves. And grab these little guys out. And now we have this really pretty border to tie that all together on the edge. Okay, so that's the orange. And um, 
yeah, if you wanted to try something different over here, you definitely could. And, um, you know, there's an, a lot of papers. What I, I kind of wanted to do was not use what I had already used on this layout so that it really kind of felt same formula, but felt really different. So uh, the last piece then would be to kind of pick a, um, you could pick a journal card or some kind of a mat, or you could put a photo over on the other page. And I love the, the different choices we have for mats over here. So sweater weather is better together. That kind of brings some of the yellow across. Autumn holds a wonder. There's a leaf. There's this red leaf. There's some sunflowers. Boy, you could go all crazy with the, the yellow in here. You could do fall is here. That one's pretty. Um, so I think for this, I'm actually going to use this one, but it's a little too much yellow for me. So I'm going to trim it down just a smidge and do some trimming and take a little of this yellow off. Okay, so I think I'll cut, I'll cut an inch off the top on this card and save that and then an inch off the bottom. So we're going to end up with a four by four square, one of my favorites. Okay, now I can see I need to start sticking things down. So I kind of like that a little bit better and then we need to find an embellishment that's going to kind of pull across and tie the layout together too. So since I used the acorns, I could use that again over here since I haven't, I haven't finished that. So we could use acorns or we've got this really pretty, um, Where's the opening? Yellow leaf over here, or yellow and green. So let's just pull a few out and see what kind of pops. Because these are so fun. All these different, different pieces. Okay, so we could do that. This one, this one. The leaves are pretty. Ooh, those fall leaves are pretty. I might do something like that. And then kind of tie this all together. So let's go ahead and, and pop this down and kind of see where things go for the final details. And pop this right in here. You know, I think the other thing we could do, here's a thought too. The other thing we could do, there was another paper Let's see if this might work better. There was another paper that I really liked and we could try that. No, actually it's not. No, it's not going to work. That's okay. We're going to just keep going. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to change my mind. We're going to just keep finishing this as it is and just see what happens. Okay. So we have this on the right left hand side and then on these strips, uh, I like to work from the bottom up, so we're going to add our adhesive on these, then the middle piece, then the top piece. So right on here. See what happens when we get there. This in here. And... If you are in my customer group and are doing this layout with a different collection, please share it. We've had so much fun lately sharing ideas in my customer group. It's been so, so neat to see how you guys scrapbook. I just, I love that part. And, you know, you I think you're inspiring each other, right? I think the the fun is when you can start going, oh, wow, I want to try that page. That's really cool. And you start inspiring each other with what you're working on. And people, you know, 
boy, we've seen all kinds of pages, all kinds of pages in that group, which is so fun. So if you have ordered with me as your advisor, please ask to join my Facebook group. We, we try to have a lot of fun in there. Okay, so there's the top. And now we're going to come over here. I know the lacy leaves. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Lana. I love the lacy leaves. <laughs> They're so pretty. Okay. So we're just going to add these middle pieces. I don't do a whole lot of adhesive, just enough to keep it in one place. Stick that down and get that kind of straight on the page and then the top piece. Okay, so yeah, I'm all worried about that blue piece now, but really actually in person, it's not bad. And it does kind of give that darker bit to the side. So we're gonna just go with it. But that's the fun of scrapbooking is that you can all do things for what works for you. Just get inspired, really. This is all about just getting inspired by, about creating something different. Okay, so we're going to add our leaf as like our little welding piece right on here. And let me get that right on the edge. So it goes right down the middle. And sweater weather is better together. And I think I'm going to tuck that under there, too. Oh, look at that. We have, it could go either way. <laughs> okay. Now that I cut the top and the bottom off, it doesn't really matter because it's a four by four. Okay. So we're going to tuck that right in as sweater weather right here. And that's still going to leave enough for a full four by six to go right here or a journaling box if you want to add some journaling perfect place for that in fact look at that we could just um i have been having so much fun with <laughs> the journal cards all these different types and styles of journaling cards so look at this one like you could do that right there bring in some hmm, I don't know, not with the stripes. Maybe we would do a dot grid. We could do a dot grid. So whatever works. Or there's probably other journal cards in this kit too. Um, or you could put a photo here and then just use these lines to journal on. That would be fun too. Okay, so let's get, I think I'm going to do this leaf. And see, we've got the green over there. Something else here. I really like this lacy leaf. Maybe I'm going to add in. I do kind of like bringing this acorn back in. Let's see. How am I going to do this? We're kind of going over the paper, but that's okay. Maybe something in there like that. So it kind of tucks together. And the other place you can look for embellishments would be the sticker sheets right so I don't know this one is kind of that one is facing huh this way they are opposite right they are opposite but maybe I like it'd be cute if we just had the little acorn maybe there's just a little acorn on the sticker strip we can go see maybe I like that better <clears throat> okay I had the stickers right here a minute ago <laughs> let's see what I've got here okay yep here they are okay so we have what do we have look we have little acorns right there we have some little acorns so yep I think we're gonna add something from the sticker strip. Those are borders. And then we have, since we already have words here, I think I'm just going to add something like that. 
maybe just, oops, that needs to be punched out. Some little clusters. Yep. So, okay. Let's add our laser leaf first. I do really like that laser. The layers of all the colors and patterns and textures in this collection. So pretty. So I'm going to kind of tuck this into the words. I think we'll leave this one kind of out here. Yep. Out this way. I'm going to touch those um, stems together just like that. And then, uh, let's see, what is, we've got, we've got two of these. I don't know if they need to be. Hmm. I think I need that third piece, but these seem a little small, don't they? Hmm. Let's see, maybe we have to just put another leaf right there. And we could do a red, red leaf. Oh, there we go. That's what I need to do. So let's do a leaf. Okay, I'm going to get my little mini foam squares. And we're going to put those on the back of this leaf. So we're ditching the whole <laughs> acorn thing. Can't quite get that to work out in my own head. <laughs> okay, and then... We'll add this right here. That little bit of red actually does help kind of pop this cluster right here. I do like that. And then that brings some of the red from the other side. So there it is. And for this layout, let me let me say, so it could definitely take um four photos over here, an additional two, three, you know, depending on what you cut them down to over here, and an additional uh, photo or journal box over here. And so that is what I love about, you know, kind of this, these simple layouts. You've got this fun technique that you can, you know, just tuck on the side, but you still have a lot of room for your photos, right? So, Let's take a look at what that would look like. Let's bring this one back in. And where's my other page? It's under my left elbow, right? <laughs> it's always under my left elbow, but it's not. Where'd my other page go? <laughs> hmm. Okay, before I lose these, these are my photos. Where'd my other page go? Did you guys see where I put it? <laughs> okay, it must be in this pile. It's gotta be in this pile because, oh, here it is. Okay, I just didn't see it. So here is the other layout that I first showed you. So same formula, same concept, just different papers, different color selections, different embellishment collections, right? And and a different journal box, but they're both super easy, super fun. And I, I think the colors all work together really well. So let's take a look at then just a little bit about photo placement. And I was thinking, what photos, what fall photos do I have? And Tennessee I was one of my favorite places to see fall colors, of course, because I have family there for one, but also just because, I mean, I, I can still remember that to this day, one of the first times I, I usually growing up, I only went to Tennessee in the summer. So one trip I came out um, to Nashville and I was looking out of the plane and I was just mesmerized by this gorgeous, canopy. I mean, everywhere you looked was red and orange and yellow, right? Like from up above. And I, I mean, it was just stunning. I looked down and I just thought, wow, look at all that color. So I went back into my um, stash and I found a trip that I went 
back to Tennessee in 1990. Okay, that was a long time ago. So these are actually three and a half by five and a half, I think, but not four by six. So it's going to look a little different if you have four by six photos. But this kind of means a lot to me to get these into pictures. This is going to go into my places we go um, or into my, you know, my Tennessee uh, album because uh, I've had a lot of photos over the years of my trips back there. So looking back, I just thought, and you know, if I reprinted these, yes, they would look stunning. But even so, I think these are gorgeous just the way they are, right? This was my uncle um, had a some property in, um, okay, I'm going to remember the name. Oh my gosh, it's drawing a blank now. For a long time, he lived here, but you could see the gorgeous fall colors and he had a, a lake on his property. And then of course, like wherever you would drive, you would see these kind of just beautiful old barns. And I mean, just such a beautiful area. So this was George's, my uncle George's lake. And this one's kind of fun. I might put this up here. Uh, and then I also had one of my cousins um, had built this beautiful house way out in the wilderness. And I know I have more photos of this, so I'm not really going to focus this time on his house. But this is the look outside his window. So I think there was one other photo I kind of wanted to... Ah, uh, this one. I think this one's really pretty. So I think I'll maybe tuck this over here. And even though it's not four inches tall, um, I think I'll trim that to four inches. So that's how I would put some pictures down on this layout. So simple. And um, in order to even have this pop a little bit more, you could either take brown cardstock. Maybe I would just do brown cardstock. Or if you don't mind, there is a gorgeous... Um, deep brown wood paper in here. I mean, stunning, this paper. It's on the back of the red. So, wow, look at if you just put those photos on here. <laughs> I might just have to use the wood paper. Look at how beautiful that is. Um, and so what I usually like to do, get those photos on here. This is how I mat. I don't mat every um, individual photo. I prefer to kind of mat in blocks, right? And you guys know I like to do this. So um, it, it gives kind of, I feel like, more unity. And so I usually just eyeball it, stick it down. It's about a quarter inch um, edge. Stick that down. I just, I just eyeball it. Now I just create one big strip turn and then I'm going to cut this off here. Okay. Okay, I've got that beautiful piece now to you. So, look at how that just pops boom on that page just like that. And now what I can do is actually trim this. Now I have this little leftover. This will be great to trim down to a 4 by 4 Let's take this this little, oh wait, which way is it going? Uh, let's make sure we go. Well, it's going to be a four by four, so it doesn't matter. So four this way by four. And then we're going to take this little photo I have here um, of the tree. And where did I put my personal trimmer? I'll just use my big trimmer for now. And I'm going to trim this to um, three and a half. Is that going to, that's going to, I'm going to want to trim it. I want to show some of that trunk. So I think what I'm going to do, trim a little off the trunk this side. Okay. And then I think this is, yep, it looks like it's three and a half. So I'm going to trim this into a three and a half square. So I'm just going to trim some of those leaves off, which is fine. 
and then look at that pop right on that brown. So now I've got this little guy tucked right in. And I love how this is just this whole page just coming together, continuing that layering and bringing in the fall colors, right? This is going to be perfect for journaling. I'm just going to tuck it under the border cartridge right up here. Oh, they're getting stuck on my photo. Give a little eyeline right here and put that in. Okay. So to finish it off, I'd probably just do the same thing. Work on this. This has got to get trimmed down to a three and a half so that it's all um, one cluster right here. And I don't know. Do you guys want me to finish the mat on the pixel? <laughs> I know. It's so, so those little things make such a difference, right? So I'll just go ahead and finish really quick. So this would be three and a half here. So now I have these are the same height. Okay. Just like that. Almost the same height. That one must be a little smaller. Let's see. I got that at three and a half, didn't I? A little bit. Can trim a little bit off that picture. Okay. And these then are going to go on the brown wood. So I'm going to bring that brown wood over here and I can't remember. I think I was going, I don't think it really matters actually when I put these on. I've got this piece left. So I'm going to put these on here just like that. And I'm going to do the same technique. So basically you've watched me create the whole page <laughs> about that. Because even though I use the other, I, I created this border and base page. We're going to use this set I created earlier. I had, I had these photos in mind. So I'm going to trim this down. And then all I'd have left is to oops, do my journaling and pop these in my album. Just like that. Okay, ta-da! And now we just have to stick. So let's pop these in. Doesn't that brown just make a difference? I, I just, all of a sudden, you've got edges, you've got boundaries to your photos, and it just works. It just works. And these I'm not going to map. I'm going to leave these just as they are. And I'll do that sometimes too. Like, yeah, I like these matted because they're the same size. And I ran out of adhesive. Um, but I don't want to mount all of them. So let's pop these guys in here. We have that. Okay. And then get this guy down. And pop this one right in here, maybe in the center, a little more in. And I may come back in and add something else, you know, maybe down in this corner to kind of create a visual triangle and um, what that would look like now that I have my photos in. And, and I do recommend that you do that in, when, once you have your photos in place, right? You can kind of take, see we've got some green in here. I'm not, not crazy about that one. What else do we have? Maybe we'll come back to this green. I was trying earlier. Down here. Okay. And bam. So I'm bringing a touch of that yellow over and across with a solid adding a little laciness here and you know that's it finito so we've got a little interest over here in this corner and then we'll add this down and that is a two-page spread done 
done and done. How about that? <laughs> okay, so let's check the chat. Um, mm, okay. Oh, thank you. Glad you guys like it. Okay, love the mat on the pitch, and <laughs> and Pez. I love that name. Look at your cute little um, icon there. That's so cute. Uh, I love, I mat everything. Okay. So there it is. That's my two page spread with the base page and border a la the virtual crop sketch from today. I think actually it was today. Here's another way you can do that. What we did tonight again, using same formula, but it looks totally different, right? Totally different. So let me know what you guys think. And if you make them, I'd love to see you. You know, you can always find, you know, hashtag craft some joy. And um, let me know if you post something. I'd love to see it. I always love seeing um, how you recreate things. Okay, so let me do this now. I'm gonna, oops. Uh, any questions? Let me, let me, let me check. Ta-da, Mona says, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn off my blinding lights. <laughs> Come back for a second here. And um, great, great formula. I'm so glad you like it. And easy, right? So easy to just cut those strips, cut those rectangles, trim them into triangles, and all of that is just pretty, pretty easy to do. Okay. Um, you're going to, Carla says she's going to try it. Yay! I love hearing it. Okay. Um, I would love to see it. So definitely let me know. And um, I have just a few other little announcements before we go. So first of all, I just want to let you know that I am going to be in Mesa, Arizona next week. <laughs> and I know I mentioned this last time. But it is, I, I mean, I have been packing and getting ready. My, um, this is a big undertaking. I'm not sure I'm going to do it again next year. But if you are anywhere in the Mesa, Arizona area, come to the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. There's a small fee to get in. And um, you can just uh, come in, find my booth. It's not going to be a very big expo, but I would love to see you. And I'm teaching classes Um Diane Lampert from Home Office will be there. It's going to be super fun. And, oh yes, Chrissy, there is going to be a change in the border maker system. If you, if you like the border maker, um, they're uh, starting the 12th, I believe, or 13th. Um, they are, you're not going to get the bonus border cartridge when you buy the border maker system you will only get the picket fence with the border um, maker system. So if you have been thinking about it, this is a good time to grab it because it's kind of like getting 1950, a bonus of 1950, because after I believe Tuesday, it's going to be gone. Okay. And uh, so Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. So also, what does that mean? That means that my shop there's an update. <laughs> I have to close my shop because I'm packing, literally packing up my retired product shop, which you can find on my website at Craft Some Joy, Scrap Some Joy Shop. And um, up until uh, I think I need to, well, I, I'm going to be closing it Tuesday night, probably, or Wednesday morning, all the way through um, uh, Monday of the following week. So this coming Wednesday through Monday, my shop is going to be closed. I'm just going to have a password up that nobody knows. <laughs> and so if there's something that you've been looking for, or there's something that you want, um, make sure that you get it before I leave on Wednesday. Um, and then I won't take it to the expo with me. And, uh, again, most of the Items in my shop are retired products that have been sold out. So if they are gone, they're gone. I don't have a way of getting more. So um, just an update on my shop there. Also, 
we are going to have a new pop crop. Yahoo! Pop crop. And that will be when I get back from Mesa, Arizona, and that will be September 24th. So if you haven't joined my Progress on Projects Facebook group, love for you to join that. Mary Smith and um, really helps me moderate that group, answers tons of questions, and it's just a great way to connect about all kinds of different ideas and information of people who are just doing everything in all different ways to create progress on their projects. Okay, so just, just a fun group. I love having you there. And one other item is, ta-da! Do you guys like it? <laughs> okay, so Noreen for now has had to take a step back from Scrap With Me times three. She's got, I keep saying she's, she's got a, she's got a lot on her plate right now. And she has some things that she's been working on that are going to be taking a lot of her time. We're hoping there's a chance she'll come back and do the scrap with me. But Kylie's like, Lauren, I want to keep doing this with you. And I said, well, Kylie, I want to keep doing this with you. <laughs> so we are going to continue the scrap with with us. Okay, so it's not going to be scrap with me times three. It's going to be Lauren and Kylie scrap with us. We even had these cute little avatars made. Do you guys like them? Kylie's idea. And I'm like, okay, we can do that. And so there's a great little artist that we found um, on Etsy who made these up for us. And we will be premiering just the two videos then using more of this golden harvest. So if you liked this tonight, I've got another super fun page I'm going to share with you on September 30th at 5 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> okay. Woohoo. Yes, Carrie. All right. It's, it's going to be fun. All right, friends. So, and you know, Kylie is super duper talented. And so, you know, you're going to get great stuff from her. I'm going to come up with the best I can for the scrap with us. And we're going to kind of just continue that on until hopefully Noreen can come back and join us. So lots of new stuff coming and remember to save the date. Oh, I forgot to make a card about that. I'll put it up soon. Um, for October 15th, I believe that's what it was. We're going to do Kylie and I will do Croptoberfest together as well. Okay. So thank you, Deb. Oh yeah. Scrap with us. Yep. We're going to do it. Um, let me scroll back and just for a second, see, uh, okay. You guys like the avatars. <laughs> kind of fun, right? Silly. I've never had an avatar made before. Do you think it kind of looks like us? I'm not sure. <laughs> So thank you for all the well wishes for the expo. Diane is here watching from Minnesota. You are on the go again, girl. Okay. So um, we will be, so there's a lot coming on. Okay. So expo, if you're in the Arizona area, I would love for you to come by. We've got scrap with us coming up. It's going to be hard for me not to say <laughs> scrap with me times three anymore, but for now, scrap with us and the pop crop and Croptoberfest. Phew! <laughs> a lot going on. You guys, have a ball if you are doing the virtual crop. Have a ball um, just kind of joining in, seeing what you are. So my biggest tip is when you see a challenge, maybe you can just take that. I know it's backwards, Mona, isn't it? It's backwards probably. Sorry. But when you see a sketch, you know, look at that and you can kind of pick components apart. And maybe you don't, you know, want to do the whole thing just as it is. But that angle really caught my eye and putting that little cluster in the center. So always be on the lookout for something fun that you can tweak and make your own, right? It's always a fun thing to do. So I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful weekend. I'll be back in two weeks with another Friday night scrapbooking and uh, Halloween, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see what I have in my hands by the time I'm ready to go in two weeks. So until then, 
I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your scrappy time. And until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.